former Israeli ambassador to the UN, UN Dory Gold, joins us now. His book is The Rise of Nuclear Iran. Welcome back, uh, back Ambassador Gold. Thank you very much for joining us. Good to be with you. you know, I've been on this program quite a bit and on, on the other networks as well, saying that I think Israel goes sooner rather than later taking out uh, uh, the Iranian ability to, to deliver a nuclear weapon, nuclear uh, attack. Um, I think there's more and more confirmation lately. Where do you see it as an insider? How close is Iran to having a bomb? Well, I won't speculate about Israel's responses, but I will tell you facts about where Iran is. We have open source material, the International Atomic Energy Agency, that tells us that Iran has already enriched enough low enriched uranium, that's 1,508 kilograms, to produce two atomic bombs if they decide to enrich further to high enrichment. We know that they have weapons designs, designs for warheads for their Shihab-3 missiles to carry nuclear weapons in the near future. And we finally, we also know that they're testing new rockets all the time. Now they can strike European territory, not just Israel. So looking at all the elements of Iranian progress, their capabilities, it's clear to us, and I think it's clear to any objective observer, that Iran is nearing the nuclear finishing line for having a complete nuclear weapons program. And is that then a potential, you won't speculate that what Israel will do, but as Eric's alluding to, does that, is that a catalyst for Israel striking? Will it happen before that? Should Obama be talking much more when it, while he's got the UN's ear about the Middle East because of the threat of all of this? Oh, this is a business network, beside being a news network. And let's talk about what it means to have a nuclear Iran, not just on Israel, on the Persian Gulf and the price of oil. The current leadership of Iran claims that Bahrain, a tiny Arab kingdom in the Persian Gulf next to the Saudi oil fields, is not an independent country. It's an Iranian province. The Iranians currently occupy three islands belonging to the United Arab Emirates. And they're building up their capabilities, their naval capabilities, in the Strait of Hormuz, through which 40% of the world, world's oil is flowing. So if you do not focus on Iran, you're not only risking the lives of Israelis, we'll take care of the ourselves. Question, though, you're risking the global is economy. Is the nuclear option itself somehow the catalyst? The, the, the threat is there. All of these things are there. Is nuclear technology the problem? Well, what happens is if you have a passive regime, you know, Belgium gets nuclear weapons. Who cares? But if Iran, which has expansionist aims, which is supporting the insurgency in Afghanistan against the United States, has been supporting the Shiite militias in Iraq against the United States, is operating with Hezbollah in South America. They get nuclear weapons. All those trends that I've described become far worse, become magnified. And that has a direct impact on the price of oil, on the freedom of access of oil, and actually the economic recovery in this country. So why does it, I mean, based on what you're saying, this sounds dire. Why are we doing nothing about it? Good question. You got a bell? <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I mean, an alarm, because people are focused on internal affairs. I mean, you watch, frankly, American television these days, and you're focused on health care, a legitimate issue for, America, for the American people. You've got ACORN, you've got your internal issues, but who has patience for foreign affairs? Too complicated, too far away. But it's all for naught if they got nuclear weapons and... God forbid something happens. They're moving into Latin America. They opened up six embassies in Latin America in the last number of years. They're closely in bed with Hugo Chavez. Hezbollah, the global terrorist organization of the Iranians, is in Venezuela. You can now go in, if you're a Hezbollah Lebanese, and you go into Ubenitz, Caracas, you don't need travel documents. You don't need a visa. You don't need a passport. You just go right in. That's all happening in your backyard. That's not just in Israel's backyard. Dory, let's talk about the international community a little bit more like you are. Let's ex expand it one step further. One alarming thing for me is the silence of Russia in all this. Russia clearly is supplying Iran with some of, whether it's the uranium they're enriched or the ability to d deliver the bomb. Uh, why are they not stepping up saying, hey, Iran, uh, Ahmadinejad, you're, you're a bad guy. We don't like this anymore and cut them off. I think the Iranian, excuse me, I think the Russians are making a strategic error that they will pay for. They think if Iran goes nuclear, it doesn't affect them. First of all, they'll tell you if you sit with Foreign Minister Lavrov, show me the evidence that there is a military program. He claims it's civilian. Nonsense. But they think that perhaps because Iran is a Shiite country, and the insurgency they're dealing with in the Caucasus, in Chechnya, and Dagestan, is a Sunni insurgency supported by Sunni countries in the Gulf, like Saudi Arabia. They think it's not their problem. Big mistake. 
a well, nuclear I, Iran. I'm sorry, guys, but real quickly, is it because they want to see a $200 barrel of oil? Well, they may want a higher price of oil. That's a good, a good assessment. It's, but I think, I think they're trying to do business. They are. They want the Middle East to become their business backyard because they've lost Eastern Europe. NATO's there now. I think this is much scarier than pretty much anything we're dealing I with. I often question whether it's uh, my government's role to make sure that the Middle East, Central America, and everywhere else is safe from nuclear arms. might be someone else's role. Dory Gold, thank you very much thank for joining you, us Dory. at the bar. On tap, ex-president.